and the one time Cedric was actually worried about us. Well, I'm glad to see you again. I was beginning to worry. You were right to not want to venture in that dark forest, Cedric. thought I'd never get out of there alive. But yet, we need to go back in there. Because I'm stupid, and I forgot something. So you want to go back to the screen where I fought the witch, right here. And uh, use this little key that's on the door. And I think the description is just like, there's a door in the tree. Durr. And it, I think even it says, dirt. A little golden heart has been placed inside the crude door of the twisted old tree. Let's, uh, what is it? Uh, okay. It still has the a description of that. Reaching a hand into the open door of the tree, Graham extracts the little golden heart. Yay! And now we have a gold heart. And the small gold heart is made of pure gold. If I can, yeah, just get out of here. La 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 la. Walk in. This is exciting, I bet. Especially when there's no music or anything. It's exciting to watch this, I bet. And uh, you guys might also notice this looks a lot better than um, the first two videos of this Let's Play. Um, that's because when I was rendering this the first time for the two videos, I was using this... Um, I'm using the program for my capture card to edit it, just combine it. And I, um, for some stupid reason, I guess just to save time on uploading, I converted them to Windows Movie Maker files, so uh, those two are in Movie Maker files, and I'm not ever going to do that again, so yeah, this will look all nice and clean from my uh, Dazzle uh, editing software. Alright, now we actually have what we need, let's just double make sure, yeah, we have everything we needed in there. Let's just go over here, hello Miss Willow. And use this lovely, 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 tiny gold heart. And give it to this tree. I wonder what kind of name she has. Hope it's not f Tinny. I hate Tinny names. My heart! You found it! Sparkle! Yay! We saved her. Look at me! I'm a princess again! Herbert! Oh, such a... Tinny name. Uh, tinny. Tin. Tin tin. Alicia! Where have you been all this time, my love? Oh, darling, just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. Hmm, Alicia. That's a woody name. Hmm, too bad she's gone. And a beautiful harp lies on the ground near the small pond. Well, let's pick it up and place it in our purse. I mean, a uh, pocket. Bending down, Graham picks up the harp from the. Graham picks the harp up off the ground and takes it with him. <laughs> Yay! In a delayed set pickup sound. And our gypsy friends are gone. Let's see what's here, though. A tambourine lies on the ground near the abandoned gypsy encampment. Hmm. Let's pick it up again. Pick up more stuff. This is just like the part of the game where you just pick stuff up. You pick stuff up and you use it. It's actually pretty funny in a way. Not completely, but a little bit. Let's just go back to town. Well, no, I want to do one more thing first before we head to town. Oh, I can't remember if I came here, but um, if you come here before you give the heart to the tree, there's a guy sitting here, and he's basically Herbert, who's like, Oh dear, I miss my love. Nope. Oh, okay. Um... Actually, what I'm looking for right here, um, is you can hear the little music, do 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 do, whatever. You need to select the cracked old boot, like while the stuff's going on, and you need to aim over here and throw it at the cat. And then we save a mice. Well, thank you, thank you, good sir. You saved my life. My children and I will never forget your kindness. Maybe someday I'll be able to return the favor. Oh, I can hear my children calling me. Goodbye, until we meet again. Yeah, that's that's what the mice have. It's exactly what the mice sound like. I'm gonna go into town, blah blah blah, I don't care. Actually, no, I don't want to go into town. 
I keep forgetting tons of things I'm supposed to do. Yeah, one more thing before we head on, head on, head on into town. There we go. I can talk now. Yep. Uh, one, like I said, last thing we need to do. Uh, get this lovely, lovely sewing machine, and I guess you're supposed to know fairy tales that, that much. Just know that any gnome could, uh, be Rumpelstiltskin to give him this, uh, lovely spinning wheel. Where'd you get this? I thought I'd lost it. Oh, is it yours? I found it in the old witch's house in the dark forest. So that's where I got to. The old hag took it, eh? You know, this ain't no ordinary spinning wheel. It's not? What's so special about it? Well, this spinning wheel can turn straw into gold, that's what. Except you gotta know how to use it. I doubt even the witch could figure that out. Thank you for bringing it back to me. Wait, not so fast. How about that marionette? Don't you think the price of the spinning wheel is worth at least twice that of the marionette? Of the puppet, I'd love to have it. Wow, you are, uh, very selfish and crude, Graham. You just gave a man his treasure and you're like, No, give me stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Boy, give that there marionette to the man here. I'll make you a new one. And the kid's like, No, Granddaddy, I don't want to... Come on, boy, let's go gather up some wood for a new puppet. Because that's how you buy love. Let's just buy everyone new stuff. Dun, dun, let me get out. Now, 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 I go back to town. Let me check first, though. Yes, have everything I need. La 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 la, walk in. We're walking with no music. You gotta love it. No sound effects or anything. Shut up, Cedric. Let's go in this first door here. Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore, and we're getting too old to keep trying. Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, feel free. Okay, thanks, crazy lady. Okay, something kind of funny. Um, I didn't realize this until I guess last time I played this. I didn't realize that was supposed to be like the making of a shoe. I always thought that was a cat there. Because you see, I just thought there was the head, and I'm pointing at the eye right now, and there's the body. I just thought it was a cat sitting there. I don't know. I, I always have just like a very imaginative information in imagination without any diction with my voice, apparently. But whatever. And uh, business seems to. Business doesn't seem to be good for the shoe maker and his wife. There isn't one pair of shoes for sale, and the old couple look worn out. Well, let's go help him, because, you know, Graham never does anything for his own, uh, for his own benefit. He always does everything, pe does things to help people. So let's give this guy a lovely, lovely pair of shoes. These are the finest pair of shoes I've ever seen. The leathers are soft and pliable, yet sturdy. The craftsmanship of the shoes is superb. And, Mom, look at this solid gold buckle. Why, well, I could retire with the sale of these shoes. And then the shoes, the shoes are yours. I don't think I can. I don't think I can find it any use for them. You're a godsend, young man. How can we ever repay you? You don't need to repay me. Just knowing I helped you is enough for me. Yeah, and you just asked a gnome to give you his grandson's marionette for a sewing machine. Well, it isn't much, but it's all I've got to give. Here, take my cobbler's hammer. Perhaps you can find a use for it, since I'll be retiring. I don't need it anymore, thanks to you. Why, thank you. A hammer could come in handy. Could come in mighty hate useful on my journey. Take care, take care, young man. I'll never forget this. That's right, son. We'll finally be able to retire in comfort. You'll be in our hearts from now on. Yay. And, of course, they're gone. It's, it's funny to, like, just kind of help them, then come back and they're gone. They'll never be back. Let's go into this lovely tailor. May I help you, sir? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, you can help me by, uh... I don't want... I don't like this at all! Blah! I bet you don't. Uh... Game? Okay, thank you. Okay, in the corner of the shop, draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham notices a thick, fur-lined cloak. Let's, uh... Let's talk to this guy about it. I'm interested in buying something. 
Oh, let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I could make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. With this, I could make... I could make you the finest trousers you've ever, ever... Well, they're talking about pants, and I can't talk about it. Well, right now, I'm just looking. Thanks, anyway. You just told him you were in the mood to buy something. Sure, sure, whatever you say, I'll just... I'm here, I'm just here to help. You expect me to wear this? Yes, I do. Okay. Let's, uh, we can actually look at the cloak here, in the hand. Come on, guy, hurry up. Here, let me help you with that. Ah, oh, that cloak fits you perfectly, and it ju lo just looks wonderful on you. Let me tell you, it will certainly keep you toasty warm during the coming winter. Let me know if you wish to buy it. Hey, these trousers don't even fit. Yes, they do. Crazy man. And I think I think it is. It, all it says is, is like the guy right there. He's like he's helping a difficult customer. So I'm guessing you're supposed to know that since a uh, tailor likes sewing, you're supposed to get you know just supposed to know to give this to him. My golden needle. My golden needle. Wherever did you find it? It was found in a haystack. I. It was found in a haystack by the end. I cannot talk for some reason. Well, I can't at all, no. By the end? Oh, yes. I remember visiting there not long ago. Vulgar man, that innkeeper. He has no scruples at all. Well, I'm glad to see you've got your gold needle back. I wonder, could you possibly see fit to give me that wonderful cloak in exchange for it? Uh, remind me never to go to Daventry to do business. I, I'd probably lose everything. The cloak? Well, why not? It's yours for the price of a golden needle. Yay. Thank you, kind sir. I'm sure it will help me in my travels. I'm sure it will. Good luck. Au revoir. And, uh, let's just get out of here. What is going on? Okay, that, that never happened before. So, get away from me, you town drunk. Let's go to the last shop here. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. Now, the only thing that's useful is this little toy shit. Little sled right here. Hanging on a side while Graham notices a strong little sled. I can talk to him. Let's see, what's he say? I, I don't remember what he has to say. This is a fine little toy shop you have here. You must be very proud. Well, thank you, son. I've worked very hard at it over the years. But you know, you need to be, you need to really love it. And I do. Are most of these toys your creations? Yes, most of them, but not all. Some my son made, some I bought, some I traded for. You're very talented. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, let me know if I can help you. Yes, yes, you can help me. I, uh, I want to be another, sh more, sh be more of a shrewd businessman than I already am. So, uh, let's, uh, give you this toy, because I want something out of it. Where did you get this wonderful marionette? The craftsmanship is excellent. Well, I don't know if you'd believe me or not, but I got it from a little gnome. I must have it. Can I buy it from you? Actually, you may have it. If you'll give me the sled in trade, you you son of a bitch, Graham. Why, of course, but I must tell you, I think I'm getting the better deal. can always make another sled, but finding another marionette of this quality, I don't know. So I can have the sled? You selfish bastard. Yes, yes, take it, it's yours. Thank you very much. I think I'll find this sled very useful. Well, you enjoy it, and thank you for the marionette. Yay! Let's just get out of here. Grandpapa! Yes, yes, my darling. Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are, are for sale for other children. Besides, you've got plenty of dolls. You can play with her, but just be careful. It doesn't look like she's playing with a doll, though. All right, Grandpapa. I'll take care of her. And let's leave. Because the funny thing about this store and the tailor shop, you get random people talking, and I hate it, because it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Alright, we're uh, almost ready to uh, finish up what I call like the first half of the game. We got one more thing we need to do first. And that north end I've been saying we need to avoid. We need to go in it now. Let's go. If I can go in, there we go. I, I, I hate this place. 
Huddled over the bar, Graham notices two rough-looking men deep in, com in a serious conversation. Since they're talking in such low tones, Graham qu can't quite hear what they're saying. Let's ask him. Be, be, uh, be very civil about it. Gentlemen, please excuse me. The inn's full. Ain't got no more rooms. Hey, boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. Ow. Because we're so nice, we just get killed. You know, struggle as he might, Graham cannot escape his bonds. Thank you, Mickey. I mean, Mr. Mouse. I told you I'd pay you for your kindness when you saved me from that horrible cat. Good luck, friend. Good, I never have to voice him again. Ugh. Let's look at this rope. Lying in a heap on the cold stone floor, Graham sees the rope that was, that once held him captive. We can actually pick it up, because it is useful. Graham stoops down and picks up the sturdy rope from the yellow from the stone floor. Okay. Let's get out of here first. Okay. We need to use the cobbler's hammer on this lock here to get out. Yay. Using the cobbler's hammer, Graham pounds on the padlock until it breaks apart. And I don't know how they wouldn't notice. Because if you go in the right door, uh, you're screwed. That, that's where the inn is. At the back of the room, Graham spies a large kitchen cupboard. Well, let's, let's go in here and steal some of their food. Let's add insult to injury. Inside the cupboard, Graham sees a large, juicy leg of lamb. Now, for some reason, you just noticed it. You need to actually reach in again to pick it up. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham pulls out the savory leg of lamb. Yep, and that's all that we need to do in the in, at the end right now. So, let's see. Let's leave, and Graham here's the... He's turn to the latch as he leaves the inn's kitchen. Someone has locked the door again. Yep, uh, let's uh, hurry up and get out of here. Boys and snake. I mean venomous snake, you idiot Cedric. Um, and we get to use the tambourine now. Uh, I don't understand how this works, because snakes are deaf, and um, they I, they can't really see vibrations, so I'm guessing... I, I don't know, I'm guessing you're shaking the tambourine so hard that you're shaking yourself and the ground, and the, the vibrations are making the snake slither out of the way. I don't know. Something like that, I guess. Well, let's go. And a few hours later... Well, let's see. Oh no, we're at Dandruff Land. Hmm. Oh well, I guess you might have to wait some other time to see what happens in this lovely, lovely, lovely episode of, uh, Let's Play King's Quest V.